All right, next up is you and Addy from um, Overton. Over to you. Thanks, everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about how we use OpenAlex at Overton.io. Um, and I'll I'll talk about what the context is there and what we do in a minute. But basically, the the first spoiler is that we we work a lot with policy documents, public policy documents from government, so grey literature, and we're trying to connect them to the kind of academic work that you find in Open Alex. Um, so we're this big full text database of, of public policy documents. We've got about thirteen point five million. Uh, full text documents from governments around the world and places like the UN and the World Bank and all this kind of thing. Um, and what we do with each of those documents is we go through them kind of basically paragraph by paragraph and we say, is there like uh, is there an academic mentioned by name here? Is there some sort of reference? And by reference, I don't necessarily mean like a formal bibliographic reference, but it could be a table caption or a footnote or something. Any kind of reference out to a piece of scholarly work um, or to another piece of public policy. And what we're trying to do is really track pathways of impact. What's the, to discover, like, what's the evidence of the impact that's going into policy that's coming out of uh, scholarly research, so universities um, and things like that. And we work with a lot of universities. Most of our customers are universities or funders. We've got some think tanks and, and IGOs in there as well. Um, so again, just for a bit of background, this is the kind of document we collect, so definitely not scholarly but also not a million miles away from scholarly um so they're typically much longer than a paper and they'll cover everything you know white papers policy briefs draft bills all this kind of thing um and sometimes they have a reference to section and and often they don't so we're trying to bring the two together in some ways like i said the, the two types of document are quite similar and so a lot of the kind of learnings we can take from uh, bibliometrics in general and also the way you store and, you know, uh, documents and use identifiers and actually a lot of the way the kind of open Alex is architected. We have an equivalent kind of architecture uh, for policy documents, but more really interested in is like where the two meet. Um, this is, oh, I think I'm missing a slide, but... Uh, so this is what it it looks like. I've I've got three different places where we we use Open Alex data, and it's kind of visible to users straight away. And this is the first one in our kind of main app. So you you possibly can't read the text very well, but these are two policy documents, and basically I've made a query in our app that says, "Give me back all the policy documents that cite somebody from the University of Toronto." So here the system saying, "Okay, well I've got these two policy documents out of however many thousand. Um, you know, this one's from the Institut National de Santé Publique de Quebec, uh, and it cites, so that's, this is the policy paper, and it cites this journal article from Computers and Chemical Engineering, and the system knows that the authors from the University of Toronto are X, Y, and Z. So, as you can probably deduce from that, what we needed to be able to do that is author affiliations. So we had all the policy documents to begin with. We've got all the extract all the references out of it. And at that point, we need you know a succession of different kind of workflow steps. So the first is to convert that piece of text, that reference that we've taken out of the policy document, and try to map it to anything in the scholarly record and then into the policy record as well. And the way we do that at the moment is actually not open analytics. We use we still use Crossref for this. And, and they've got a query dot bibliographic query, which some of you might be familiar with. Basically, you send a whole bunch of text. You throw a bunch of text against Crossref, um, and it gives you back a whole bunch of, of scored results. And there's lots of you know nuances around it. I'm pretty sure it's a weight, you know, like a weighted field Elasticsearch query under the hood. Um, and so the scores, depending on the language, the the text is in, and all this kind of thing can can vary wildly. It's quite difficult to set a, a fixed threshold, but it works for us. We've been using it for for quite a long time. And then once we've got that, that means we have a DOI effectively for each uh, uh, reference in the policy document that, that maps to something scholarly. And for, so for that DOI, we now need the authors. And not only the authors, but ideally a disambiguated author and a disambiguated author where it's not just uh, uh, affiliation level at the, at the person. So we don't want just to know that Alice Smith was at Harvard between two years. 
we need specifically each for each one of Alice's papers on a DOI by DOI basis to know was she at Harvard when she wrote this? Because you get all sorts of things about, you know, and a lot of people on the call will be like this, right? You you work at an institution, you start working in a paper, you leave, and then it gets published while you're in a new group. So even though your new affiliation is Imperial College or something, you're, it's your old one on the paper. So we need to keep that, that link. And we were building this um, kind of, trying, well, it was Microsoft Academic at the time. So originally around 2019, 2020. Um, and then when we really started getting much closer to something production ready, obviously Microsoft Academic went away and Open Analytics appeared. And we did quite a lot of analysis work looking at the affiliation, where we could get affiliation data from, because it's not in Crossref, um, or at least it's not in Crossref, the, the, the level of, of uh, coverage and quality that we need. And very roughly, and the caveat here is that we did this in 2022, we found that of the papers that we were interested in, which is all the papers that are cited at least once in policy, that goes back, you know, they're, they're citing things from 1960s and things potentially, about 80% of them had affiliation data in Open Alex. And then beyond that, and this is more recent stuff for us, we're interested in not only the affiliation data, but and having that affiliation string be disambiguated to a, a grid or a raw ID. And we know the, the accuracy there is not perfect, but it's over 90%. And there's two ways of looking at that, those stats, I think. One is sometimes if you come at it cold from, from a data science perspective, you're like, 80% is not a great, recall which is true the other way of looking at it is for in this context for affiliation data 80 percent is actually great um it's when we compare dimensions and, and scopus and open alex they're all kind of in this region um the clincher for us uh for open alex is that um it's open the open infrastructure part of it and specifically there was no complicated agreement where we need to do where um for some systems the question was, you can use our affiliation data, but only for mutual customers, which would have mean that for us, we sell to people who maybe have Scopus, but don't have dimensions, or they have dimensions, but not Scopus, or they don't have either. And we would, we'd have to maintain parallel affiliation systems and different sets of data for each one of them. That just, that wasn't going to work. So Open Alex was the, the kind of clear winner there. Um, I showed before, like where we're using the main app, um, because we're pulling in this data now for, for all the papers that are cited in policy, we use it in other places too. So um, we have Overton, but then we also do some work with Sage on a free app called uh, Policy Profiles, Sage Policy Profiles. You can go there and sign up. There's no, it's not behind a, a paywall or a login wall or anything. Anyone can go and create an account. And basically it's a way for individual researchers to get a view of the policy impact of the, the papers that they've cited, or at least you know, some indicators of the policy impact uh, that they might've had. And we have two routes into that. So when you first sign up as a researcher, we say, first of all, do you have an ORCID? And if you don't have an ORCID, follow this other route and we'll try and guide you into getting a list of your papers. And that second route is using Open Alex under the hood, where if I go in as uh, Elizabeth Smith, then I'll search using the open alex api to give me back potential matches and as a user i click and i say this is me that's also me but this isn't we find around 11 percent of users go for orchid so i see the majority of people are going to the uh the open alex route still so you know there's a there's always this pragmatic you know in an ideal world everyone would have an orchid perfectly and maintain their record and you know you wouldn't need anything else but actually it's definitely not the case in, in uh, from a pragmatic perspective. In the real world, you need to have a, a good second option. Well, in this case, it's the first option. Orchid's the second option. Um, but we're using it that way. The other part, um, and I wanted to be quite quick about this, is where we're beginning to use open Alex data in new ways is, like a lot of people on this call, I imagine, uh, for machine learning. So we're starting to uh, create embeddings for all the abstracts and titles inside Open Alex. And this is basically so we can match them to policy related objects. So in this case, um, we've got a, a new app coming out, which again, which is free to everyone, which collects all sorts of policy opportunities or so calls for evidence or public consultations happening in the world. Anywhere where an academic is being explicitly asked to come and give their opinion uh, on government policy, 
Um, and what we want to do is say, okay, let's get all of the abstracts in the same kind of semantic space as this opportunity. And then say, who are the authors? Again, using that affiliation data. Who are the authors that are appearing most often in this collection of abstracts that are close to it? And then saying, being able to say to that author, look, did you know, you, if you are interested in doing anything policy related, um, these are the things that are happening in your country right now that you might want to take a look at. So um, talked about creating embeddings uh, to match policy opportunities. The uh, There's a lot of kind of nuances in there, which I think is a whole other talk. We, we're finding the topics actually really useful to help as a second layer to that. So we do this semantic similarity thing, but beyond that, you get things like the government is interested in solar panels, but specifically solar panels on agricultural land, for example. And they need like a combination, an expert who has both. And being able to bring in the new topics and say to a user, okay, well, uh, we're filtering down, but now you pick the topics that you want specifically in the academics we, we tell you about is really useful. I think the new topic stuff is really good. Definitely not without uh, uh, flaws, but useful already. One minute left. Cool. Uh, I'll wrap it very quickly then. So how we consume the data, uh, just for, for info, we have a local Postgres mirror using the snapshot data. So we update that uh, uh, once every month or two. Um, the pro to that is we use Postgres a lot already. So it's quite easy for us to fit into our existing workflows. The downside is that because it's so big, it's really hard to add a new index uh, unless we've kind of planned for it in advance. If there's any kind of schema changes, we have to go in and change the importer to uh, to uh, to fix them, to account for them and all this kind of thing. Um, our, it works for us because a lot of the papers that are cited are slightly older. It's not, you know, it doesn't have to be up to the second. Um, if something isn't in our mirror, we fall back to the, to the API. Okay, and this is my last slide in terms of, uh, well, I'll present what we'd love to see more is funding data. So especially from specific big sources like Gateway to Research, NIH Reporter. Um, in the longer run, we want to figure out this query bibliographic equivalence and then switch over entirely from Crossref to, to Open Alex. Um, and then more complete and consistent article types is the other thing. So we hit a lot of problems with things like book reviews, where the title is the title of the book and, and this kind of thing. And just being able to tell what a review versus an article, it's obviously that's a manual job for, for some abstract and indexing systems. But if there's something we can automate, uh, that'd be great. Cool. And I'll end there. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Ewan. Um, stay tuned for the roadmap presentation at the end because I've got some things <laughs> I think you'll be happy about.